Today we're gonna demystify the shocking secrets of color balance in Photoshop and you'll be surprised to know that some of the things in Photoshop is actually a scam which is indeed a good thing so without any further ado let's get started Welcome to the world of Photoshop and if you want to download this photo make sure to go ahead and check the links in the description so Color balance is something which you can apply through adjustments and also through adjustment layers. So you can go to image and then adjustments and then there is color balance. Also what you can do, you can apply through adjustment layers by clicking on the adjustment layer icon and choose color balance. If you had directly applied it through image adjustments color balance, so for example if we applied that and if we did something like this and hit OK, it's kind of a destructive method. You cannot selectively say that, hey Photoshop, I just wanted to apply it in this area or just on the face or just on the background. It's And you cannot change it later, so it's kind of destructive. Yes, you can always go ahead and convert this into a smart object, that is an option, but you can also go ahead and apply it through an adjustment layer which is always non-destructive. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and click on the adjustment layer icon and then choose color balance. Simple. Now let's go over this one by one. It's simple guys, you don't have to worry about it. So first of all, we have this tone. Think of it as target. What are we targeting? Are we targeting the midtones? Are we targeting the shadows? Or are we targeting the highlights? So are we targeting the dark areas? Are we targeting the mediumly lit areas? Or are we targeting the bright areas? So what are you targeting? Depending upon what you select, for example, if we select shadows, whatever you do with these three sliders, it's only gonna affect the shadows. Got it? All right, so we are targeting the shadows and then if you manipulate these three sliders, it's only gonna affect the shadows. Now for now, let's go ahead and check this off. We'll understand this later. So if you want the shadows to be more yellowish, take it to the left, very simple, self-explanatory. Bluish, take it to the right. Greenish, take it to the right and magenta, take it to the left and similarly with the reds and the cyans. Now it might occur to you, why three sliders? And why are these sliders red, green and blue? Why not any other colors? Very simple reason guys. Always remember, a digital image is composed of different levels of red, green and blue, right? And even if you zoom into the screen, even if you zoom in to an LCD screen, look at it with a magnifying glass, you will see small lights of red, green and blue in different levels depending upon the color that it is showing right now. All right, so that's why we have these three, red, green and blue. And we call it RGB. And even if you convert this image to CMYK, we'll have the same sliders, why? Because CMY is the opposite of RGB. Now here's an interesting thing and here's where things get interesting. Have a look at this. If we want, let's reset that and let's move to shadows. If we want, the shadows to be more bluish. Let's take it to the right. This is how it looks like, right? Now let me show you an interesting thing and you'll be blown away. Let's just turn this layer off, okay? Now let's add a curves adjustment layer, okay? Now, if we go to blues, and in that one, what did we do? We increased the shadows and we made it more bluish, right? Okay, similarly in curves, if we move to blues, and always remember, inside of curves, left side represents darker areas, right side, brighter areas. So what is shadows? It's dark area and that's why I told you. Shadows, dark area, midtones, mediumly lit areas, and highlights, bright areas. So dark areas, if we brighten it up, if we increase the blues, look, the same effect, have a look. This one curves, this one color balance. The levels are different, but have a look. It's the same thing. It's exactly the same thing. Now let's move back to color balance. Make sure preserve luminosity is checked off. We're gonna discuss that later. Similarly, if you go to shadows and make it more yellowish, okay? And then you might think there is no yellow thing right there. There's no yellow in the drop down list. Always remember RGB opposite of CMY. So yellow is the opposite of blue. So if we move to blue and if we decrease the blue in the shadows just like this, it's the same thing. Look, it's exactly the same thing. Similarly, if you do it with the midtones, you might think, okay, where are the midtones? Let's reset both of them, okay? Let's select this, let's reset both of them. Let's go to the midtones of the color balance. So we'll just go ahead and select the midtones. It's already selected. And we wanna make it say more greenish or magenta-ish. So let's make it more magenta-ish, just like that. 
Okay, now let's move to curves. So we'll select green, and if you want to make it some make something magenta, you want to decrease the green. So midtones. Where are the midtones? Simple. Mid. Oh, <laughs> I'm sorry about that pronunciation. Midtones are in the middle. Simple. Click one point, and simply take it to the right. Same effect. Have a look. This one. This one. This one. Boom. Right. And similarly with the highlights. So if you look at the highlights, let's just reset both of them again. And if you want to make the highlights a little more yellowish, so we'll just go over to the highlights and yellow. Freeze the yellow over there. And similarly, as you can see in this one, if I go to the curves and go to the blues, I decrease the blues in the highlights. Same effect. It's the same. So why do we need color balance? That's the question that we need to answer. Now, let me show you a feature which might justify the use of color balance. Now, have a look at this. There's a thing called preserve luminosity. Now, what is preserve luminosity? Okay, let's move to midtones right now. Preserve luminosity is not checked. If I just go ahead and try to do something, it might increase the luminosity, which means it might increase the brightness of the image. And if I take it to the right, probably it is increasing the brightness. If I take it blue to the right, probably it is increasing the brightness or maybe this is decreasing the brightness. So it is affecting the brightness overall. Now, if you go ahead and reset that and check preserve luminosity and do something like maybe increase the blues or maybe go to the shadows and then increase the blues, it makes sure to maintain the luminosity. It doesn't brighten or darken the image. It maintains the luminosity values. Does that make sense? Let me show you what that means. All right, let's reset that and let us understand that in terms of curves. So if we go ahead and if we try to go to the shadows and maybe make sure preserve luminosity is checked as the name suggests again, it preserves luminosity. It doesn't let the image brighten or darken as you move the sliders. Okay, let's increase the blues. It is something like this, right? If you take it over, it is, it's different. If you check it off, it's different. If you check it on, it's different. Okay, it's something like this. All right, keep this effect in mind. Now, if I turn this off, let's go back to curves and let's reset the curves again. And let's go to the blues. And we were targeting the shadows. If we increase the blues, it's not looking anything like that. But if you increase it, look at the output levels. Output is 39 and input is zero, which means if we look at the overall image, the brightness of the image did increase. So we need to balance that. To balance that, we will go to RGB and then move it in the opposite direction, just equal to this, 39. See, input has to be 39 this time. 37, 38, 39. Same effect. Same effect. So let's turn it off, turn it on. Same thing which means whenever you are playing with color balance with preserved luminosity turned on, if you increase it, it balances for the luminosity inside of an RGB channel. Simple, makes sense. Let me show you one more example. Now I have reset everything. Let's move to color balance. And this time, let's target the midtones. So we are in the midtones and make sure preserved luminosity is checked. And if we increase the magenta, just like this. It looks something like this, right? Let's turn it off. Let's move to curves. And we're going to do something similar. We're going to not follow the input output values. I'm just going to do it very quickly. So we'll go to greens and we want to make it more magenta-ish, right? So magenta is the opposite of green. So let's decrease greens from the midtones, something like this. And similarly, let's go to RGB, sorry, and let's increase it. So it will have a kind of a similar effect. Have a look. This one is the curves. This one is the color balance. A little different, but if we have followed the values accurately, it might have been that way. So that's all there is. It's all the same. So why should you use color balance? Here's why. If we move to color balance, have a look. If we move to shadows, we make it more yellow or probably more bluish with the preserved luminosity checked on. Now, if you want to make the highlights more, say, yellowish, and if you want to play with the other values, it's going to get very tricky when you do it with the curves because you have to 
maintain the luminosity of everything. Okay, if you just moved one slider in one target, that's okay, you can just balance that out. But if you're moving multiple sliders in multiple targets, highlights, shadows, and midtones, it's gonna be messy. So at that point of time, color balance is very, very simple to use. And I kind of think it gives a better midtone than curves, but I might be wrong. And I tried it, it's, it might be difficult to do it with the curves, but it's very easy to do it with the color balance. Now let me show you one more very interesting stuff. Now look at the sliders of color balance. Yellow, blue, green, magenta. Reminds you of something? Let me show you what it reminds you of. If we go ahead and select this layer, and if we go to filter, camera raw filter, or even in Lightroom, you'll see this. Have a look at this. There is this white balance section. And inside of that, you will find two sliders, temperature and tint. Have a look at it. On the right side, we have yellow. On the left side, blue, green, and magenta. Similarly, in this one, color balance, we have that. But in color balance, we can target it in three different areas, midtone, shadows, and highlights. In white balance, we cannot. It is similar, but it's not the same. So how do we actually use color balance? Let me show you one simple example. Simple. Shadows blue, highlights yellow. It gives a very nice effect to the image. And if you are using color balance, make sure to use it with preserved luminosity. Otherwise, you might as well use curves. So at the end of the day, the question boils down to this. Which one to use? curves or color balance? And the answer is very simple. Whatever is easier to you. Whatever is convenient to you. My job is to show you both. My job is to show you all the techniques. It is you who need to decide. If you're applying something with preserved luminosity inside of color balance, well, it's much more easier. You don't have to mess with the RGB channel values and match those luminosity, no. It's very simple to work with. If you are applying something without preserved luminosity and if you find this is easier, please go for it. I hope this video helped you clear your concepts and if it did, make sure to give us a like and also don't forget to subscribe and not just subscribe, ring the bell so that you my friend don't miss a thing. I would like to take this moment to thank all these nice people for making this episode possible and making Pix Imperfect free for everybody forever. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys in my next one. Till then, stay tuned and make sure that you keep creating.